going on? It's, uh, it's Teddy. He's doing all sorts. I just can't keep him still. Bit early for spring cleaning. Yeah, well, he's got all the tins out. He wants to put them all in alphabetical order. Where is he? He's in the toilet. You've got to get him some help. You can't have him wandering around saying you're a murderer or whatever. Yeah, well, you know that's all crap anyway. Obviously, but the last thing we need is bad publicity for the restaurant. Morning, Terry. All right. I tell you, look, you, you don't need to do that, mate, eh? Why don't you just leave that alone? Someone's got to. Simon used to talk about order, systems, fellowship, friendship. Without those things, we're lost. We wander around into darkness. Yeah, all right then, Teddy. Don't get upset, eh? You do what you want to do. Hello, Anne. Hi, it's Marianne Dwyer. Listen, about that job in Glasgow, I was wondering, is the post still open? Who are you talking to? Taking an order? No, I was um, trying to get through to the manager of the function rooms. I thought I might as well make myself useful, seeing as I'm on the scrap heap with three million others. Oh, look, someone turn up. Listen, Maz, I've been doing some sums in there. I think we need to look at our wedding arrangements. Maybe cut the cost out. We'll manage. You haven't got a job. Let's pull our horns in. It's all right. I've put my dad in the picture. He said he'd help out with the reception. <sighs> yeah, but uh, with the turn up with our Ellison, I don't know. Forget that. Look, it makes sense. Don't let pride get in the way, mate. Hello, young lovers. All right, Greg. Hi. Come on, cheer up. You're getting spliced next week. Is that why you both got gobs on you? It's Maz. He's been given a push from work. Oh, it's a bit of a blow, that, isn't it? So, um. All those casual workers, they're still there, then? Yeah. Oh, Mick, you couldn't let me use the van, could you, to go and pick up my files from work? It's boxes of them. Hey, I'll take it in. Are you sure? Well, as far as the gate will do, I mean, there's no need for you to get involved in this picket business. No, it's no problem. I'll drive you straight in. Strike's got nothing to do with me. Well, I'll go and get my coat. Here you are, Blackleg. Are you being racist? See you later, Mick. Yeah. Oh, Mrs. Jordash, good afternoon. What do you think of this ghastly contraption? I bet you're as shocked as I am. Oh, hello, Mr. Crosby. When did that arrive? They dropped them off earlier. I couldn't believe it. Well, it's bigger than I thought. Exactly. That is, in fact, itemised in point four of this letter which I've written to the council. I mean, how is one expected to shift this damn thing when it's filled to capacity? Well, I suppose it'll do, especially as it's here. Hiya. Hello. Hello, Beth. What are you doing home? I'm filling in for one of the girls at the restaurant this afternoon. Just come to get my uniform. This hours. I'm afraid it is. Horrendous, isn't it? I don't know. I think it's neat looking. Practical. Mm, well, I suppose it is. Mrs. Jordash, oh, look, hon, I wonder if I could prevail upon you to read this letter, which I have, in fact, drafted to the Waste Disposal Department of the Council, itemising my, well, our concerns about these things, and um, sign it here, if you wouldn't mind. Is it OK if I have a read and a think first? Yes, yes, of course. I mean, I wouldn't want to be accused of railroading people into anything, unlike the authorities. So if I could perhaps leave a copy of this with you and uh, call back for it later, would that be all right? Um, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. I knew that I could rely on you. Bye-bye, then. Bye, Mrs. Jordash. Thank you. Do you want a drink? No, I've not got time. Better go. Mum, I saw Kenny Maguire on Friday. Oh, yes, where? I went to see him at the betting shop. What? I'm not having anyone threatening you ever again. He's cheating us with his phony interest payments. Oh, Beth, what have you done? I just did what I had to. He's taking us for a ride, Mum. What did he say? Well, not much. I didn't give him a chance. But from now on, we're paying what we agreed, not a penny more. Oh, he won't accept that. Well, he'll have to. Mum, look. The more you give him, the more he's going to ask for. So when he comes on Wednesday, I'll be here with you and we keep him at the front door. From now on, we don't let him in, OK? Hey, have you heard about the opening of the restaurant? I know, they had some fancy guests, didn't they? Not that we got an invite, like. No, I don't mean that. Apparently there was nearly a riot. That Terry Sullivan made a right show of Barry, going on about murder and Simon Howe. And well, they reckon Barry was beside himself. No way. Yeah, Jimmy Cork, lots of bailing and everything. Oh, hello. All right, Buzz. Hey, have you got any plasters, Ron? I sure have. So, uh, how did the restaurant open and go then? 18 people, please. Eh, uh, fine, thanks. No, uh, hitches. 
Well, actually, there was a bit of a kick-off with Terry. I think all this Simon House stuff got to him, you know. Really? He hadn't heard anything out of him? No, no. Mind you, I had a good feeling that Simon was off his box. I mean, doing yourself in. Right, uh, keep the change anyway, Ron. I'll have one of these. Oh, cheers, Baz. Ta-da. Ta-da. Covered on up a bit there, wasn't he? Well, Patricia said there was murder. <laughs> said Terry went berserk, shouting all kinds of things about Barry. <laughs> Listen, maybe we should have a look at this place. I mean, I know we were overlooked for the opening now, but we could become regulars, couldn't we? Get a bit of discount. Yeah, I've learned a good night out since we got back together. Right. We'll go around here tonight, don't we? It'll be chocker. We'll have to book. Well, that's no problem, is it? We've got this afternoon. We know Barry. Mm. Get a babysitter for his nibs here. We'll get ourselves down there. Are the rumours true, then? Which ones? Did you jump or were you pushed? Well, does it really matter? We'd just like to know how ruthless this management are. Very. So you were pushed. You do it to anyone. Get your in to do the dirty work when you think you've got it sorted. Capitalists, screw anyone, love. Do you have to cross this picket line? Your dispute, mate, not mine. Hello, Pen. Hi. Excuse me, Barry, have you got a minute? I suppose you've heard these infernal bins have arrived. Yeah, but not now, eh, David? I mean, you can see how... Mr. Crosby, do you share the hopes? I beg your pardon? We need to spend more time with people we love. Time's running out. You've got to help me. Steady on those, sir. Just take it easy, eh, sir? Well, didn't you just want to be with people, friends, share each other, be with each other? Yes, 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 of course. man's having a breakdown. Exactly. I'm not letting them near any doctors. He'll pull through. I'll see to it. So where are you going now? Eh, uh, home. Barry, we're going to have to get to work. You'll have to come with us, then, eh? Think about what you're saying. Look, I've got no choice, have I? I want to stay with him, eh? Me? If you don't want to be near me, I understand. No, no, it's not that. It's just that I've got an awful lot of... No, 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 it's all right. It's all right. You can stay with me. Are you sure? Yes, absolutely. Come on, let's get a move on. Good luck. Well, Ian, um, thanks very much, David. Right, well, look, um, I've got a lot of things to see to, not least to muster some support against these uh, wheelie bin things, you know, get a campaign going and all that. How would you feel about helping me? What's in the bins? If I have my way, absolutely nothing. All right, then. Let's get going. It must cost a fortune in security for a place like this. You know, all that high-tech stuff in there. You're kidding. This company won't spend that money on things like that. The alarm in the pizza parlor is probably better than here. What? Not even a cocky watchman? A what? Oh, they call them security guards these days. I see. No, no cocky whatever you call him. It's pathetic, isn't it? Yeah, well, I couldn't care less anymore. I'm just going to go and say goodbye to the typist. Won't be a minute. No rush. Everything all right? Why, well, seem to be enjoying themselves. Oh. Barry! Oh, shouting like a show of us. It's all right, love. We're late to the management, aren't we? Good afternoon. Hello, Pen. You look very nice. And so, too, I might add, does this place. Very nice. To be honest with you, we were expecting a bit of a dive, but... No, fair dues. It looks splendid. Thank you. So me and Bev thought we'd pop in for a bit of a nosh. Oh, have you booked? What do you mean, booked? We're made to Barry's, aren't we? You must be able to squeeze us in somewhere. I bet there's loads of room. Hey, Barry! Ron! I mean, after all, Pam, we did used to be neighbours, didn't we, eh? Hey? Here are, those two are off. Can't we fit in there? Uh, Cass, could you clear me a table upstairs, please? Ah, don't worry about that. Come on, love. All right, boss. Oh, yeah. Listen, uh, these rumours about your Marianne, I mean, is she, uh, she just jacked the other one? Well, between me and you, her bosses were making out that she was feeding you lot information. How do you mean? 
Well, they were going on about it being at your car's 21st, making all kinds of allegations, so really they left her with no choice. They just binned her off, then? Too right. Somebody stitched her up good style, and I'm going to do some real damage when I find out who it was. Ah, it wouldn't be worth it, Mick. No, but it'd give me the satisfaction of filling somebody in, you know what I mean? But she'll find another job somewhere. She's all right. She works hard. Oh, it counts for nothing, Eddie. <laughs> we're getting married next week. We just bought a house in both our names, and Marion hasn't got a job. I'm going to be well in over my head within a month, and I've already lost one place of repossession. Hey, look, uh, I'm sorry, mate. Something will turn up for you. You'll be all right, mate. Yeah, well, I hope so. Listen, Eddie, uh, I'm glad that me and you stayed mates through all this. Then let all this strike business get in the way, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so am I. See you, mate. See you. Yeah, well, it's wheels within wheels, isn't it, love, eh? Those businessmen scratch each other's backs. I'll get Barry in down the Legion if he likes. Bloody hell. Have you seen this? Listen to this. Prime pieces of fillet with delicately sliced lamb's kidneys braised in a rich brown ale sauce and all brought together under a golden dome of our chef's superb shawcrust pastry. It's a steak and kidney pie, that. I can read. How come we're letting in one of my tenants and the cleaner from the club? This place feels like a soup kitchen. He'd have made a scene. And we don't want to start getting a reputation for people making a fuss, now, do we? Yeah, but they're not exactly the clients help we want in here, are they? Oh, yes, I'm sure Lloyd and Lily thought that on Friday when your friend Terry kicked off. So, where's that daughter of yours, then? Rachel. Oh, she's at a friend's. No, I meant the confident one, Beth. She's working. I suppose she told you she came to see me on Friday? Yeah, um, look, she, um... She embarrassed me, Mandy. But, I must admit, I sort of admired her in a way. There's not many people who'd walk into a bookies and start slagging me off. I like girls with a bit of spirit. What's cooking? Irish stew. Mmm. Looks pretty special. I don't suppose you'd let me judge your culinary skills, would you? Just a plateful. Well, I was saving some for Sinbad. Oh, I'm sure he wouldn't mind. He could do with losing a bit of weight anyway. There we go. I don't know. It's like school dinners again now. Spotted dick. It looks lovely. Well, it should be. The chef's excellent. Are you sure you won't have anything? Eh, uh, not at these prices, love, thank you. I don't suppose there's any chance of any discounts, is there? <laughs> so are you on all day? No, I've finished now. Tell them having a little part-time job on the side, though, eh? Well, it helps pay for the books. Well, you watch that Barry Grant doesn't work you too hard, you know. You save some energy for your studies. Well, that's precisely what I'm doing when I finish here, studying. Good girl. You're not seeing our Michael tonight, then? No, maybe at the weekend. See you later. ta -da. You know, I'm glad she's seen our Michael. Keeps his mind off all this caper over our Josh. Has he mentioned it lately? Well, I've been keeping out the way, really. At least it's easier to avoid him than Dee Dee. Ron, we need to sort this out. I mean, Josh needs to be yours properly, legally. What happens if your Mike wants him back? I won't really love it and screw his life up. Then divorce her, Ron. I mean, if we get married, then you're free to adopt Josh and he'll be yours. Well, I'll try, but you know what? Dee Dee will make things, don't you? But I will ask her. Promise. I promise. Well, thanks for your help, old son. Are you all right to go upstairs on your own now? Yeah, no sweat. Yeah. Look, Terry, um, I know that things haven't been very good between you and I over the past few months for a variety of reasons, but I do want you to know that if you need anyone to talk to, 
about anything. You can phone me or call round to see me at any time. I mean it. I haven't got anything left now, you know. I know your friend has just died, and that's a, that is a terrible thing to get over, but it does get easier in time, believe me. We start off with nothing. Then you get mum and dad. Then you get some friends. Then there you go. Friends, family. We need to go back, 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 back and... Terry, Terry, listen to me, please. Tomorrow, I'm going to speak to Barry, right? And I'm going to see if we can get someone to help you, you know, give you a bit of counselling or something. I mean, what I, I would really like is to take you back to my place, but I'm afraid there's not really much room there. Yeah, it's OK. Well, look, um, tomorrow, I'll call around here, right, and we'll go and see a few more neighbours and see if we can get something done about this blasted wheelie bin business. You know, we've got a battle on our hands if we're going to win this fight. All right, and I really could do with your help. So, you get a good night's sleep now, right? Here we are. OK, and I'll, um, I'll call around and I'll see you tomorrow. OK? Don't worry. Hi, it's me again. Look, sorry about before. Yeah, that job in Glasgow, is the post still open? Great, yeah. Yeah, right. Look, I have to go, but I'll let you know how I get on. OK, bye. Might be an idea to let me know as well. You frightened me. You trying to get that job? Well, I'm out of work, Mick. Why don't you go into Glasgow? What kind of marriage would that be? Well, a better one than with only one salary coming in and us having to scrimp and save. So you've already uh, thought this through then, have you? Well, no, but... Look, being short of cash would put us under pressure. We don't need that. Well, we're getting married next week. You know, I want us all under the same roof. You, me, the kids. I don't want any more of this separation business, please. But Mick, don't push me into a corner. If our marriage is going to work, then we've both got to be happy. Without a proper job, I'll find that really difficult. Well, I suppose I'd better make a move. Oh, I'm going. Well, it's late and I've still got a lot of calls to make. Now, payments. Uh, I, I didn't expect you until tomorrow. Of course. Uh, you will have it then, won't you? Well, uh, I can have the usual money, but the extra you asked for. Oh, Mandy, we've been through all this. I'm standing between you and a massive debt. I know it's my job, but I need the money to do it. But when are the payments going to get less? I'm finding it harder and harder. And I feel for you. I really do. But I'm not a charity. Well, the way it's going, I'm never going to pay this loan off. I mean, I am trying, we all are, but I just can't see any end to it. Hey, sweetheart, it's all right. I just want to help Mandy. Well, look, no one can help. Well, you could help yourself. How would you like to wipe your debts out? Oh, it's the stuff I dream of, you know, winning the pools, the lottery. I can't write these debts off. You could. How? Well, payment in kind. What? <sighs> Just tell me, Mandy, what are the interesting things going on in your life? There probably isn't much, is there? I'll bet 
You haven't had a good night out for ages, have you? No. You get lonely. I know you do. And I'm the same. Ah, oh, we might have people around us. I can go out, meet shallow people, talk. But what I miss most, Mandy, is proper company. And I just think that you and I could be closer. And you wouldn't have to worry about your debts. I'd take care of them. What, you'd pay my debts off if I went out with you? <laughs> well, it would have to be a bit more than a night out, Mandy. You pay me to sleep with you. Well, I wouldn't put it as crudely as that, but, um, yeah, that's the general idea. Now, I don't want you to feel pressured. It'd just be a, a business arrangement that would suit the both of us. Well? Hi. What's he doing here? <laughs> I hope you don't greet your college professors like that. Mum, I asked you not to let him in. Mr McGuire's just going. Yeah, well, you're not supposed to be here in the first place. Will you please leave? I'm just finishing my business with your mother. If you don't leave, I'll call the police. Now, get out. There's no need for that, Beth. No, none at all. <sighs> I'm just here, legitimately, to see your mother. Isn't that right, Mandy? Yes. Right. Now I'll go. Oh. And I hope you don't make a habit of embarrassing me. Is that a threat? Me? Never. Think about what I said, Mandy. Bye. Mum, what are you doing? I thought we agreed not to let him in. Did he force his way in? I know he just came in. And what did he want? Oh, um, oh, he wanted to talk about, uh, about how I was going to pay the bigger repayments. And? Nothing. Mum, he's conning us. Look, Beth, whatever way you look at this, this is my problem, so you let me deal with it. Channel 4 video, Brookside, The Women, which includes classic clips from the first 12 years on The Close, is out now. He said you wanted me round here on the quick. Yeah, I can't find Terry. I don't think he stopped at the flat last night. Why, but is he like? Well, if I knew that, I wouldn't be worried about him, would I? Oh, will not you? Do us a favour, will you, Jimmy? Put that bin on the back of ours, eh? Oh, morning, Barry. Hey, Dave, where did you leave Terry last night? At the flat. Is there a problem? Well, he's not there. And when I went round, the salon doors open. That's odd. Yeah, well, uh, are you sure he went right into the flat? I presume so. I left him at the salon. I said I'd see him sometime today and he could tag along with me if he wanted to. Right. we well, better have a look around the woods where that Notre Simon was old up, eh? I'll see you later, Dave. Uh, uh, Barry, look up about these wheelie bins. We never got a chance to have a word. Well, maybe later, eh? Can I have some lock-up breakfast? <laughs> I thought you were cooking it. Uh... Me? I haven't even been down yet. I thought it was me dad. Thought what was me? June break. 
Thought our car had gone to work. Yes. Aye, aye. Wait there. Oh, it's not the case yours, is it? Oh, your dad'll sort it. What the bloody hell are you playing at? What the hell are you doing here? I was just going to ask you the same thing. How did you get in? He's bloody broken. Oh, come on, Where out. Are they? Oh, hold on a minute, Ed. No, he's on his way out, or I'm calling the busies. Hi. I didn't hear you go out. Yeah, I just went to get this. See if they'd publish that message for our Ellis. Yes, they've done it. Well, let's hope he rings. He's done this before, you know, just disappeared off the face of the earth without a word. I still think it's a bit insensitive asking him to be best man, you know. Now, as my brother, he'll understand. Well, I'd just prefer if we had someone else. Please, Mick. I'll see. Morning, campers. All right, son. Hey, I've always thought that dressing gown looked better on him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, any chance of making a cup of tea? Yeah, mate. Right. It was fine, mate. This one. Yeah, suits me. Hey, Sid. Me and Maz have just been talking about a best man for the wedding, you know. And uh, we wondered if you uh, had any suggestions, like. Well, you want someone who's a mate, a good mate, and reliable, trustworthy, someone who knows the both is and the kids. Yeah. So we wondered if you uh, thought that Greg might be embarrassed if we asked him. Greg? Yeah, well, thought it'd make a nice gesture, you know. Yeah, it'd be a good choice. Mick. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Would you do it, mate? Me? Yeah, well, if I can't get out of Ellis, uh, I'll be made up a few to it soon. Me too. I'd love to. And I'll tell you what, you're going to be dead proud of me, because I'm going to be the best, best man ever. He's not going to hurt anyone. What's this all about, then? He looks mad. Something's not right. He's been in hospital, remember? What are we going to do with him? He can't stay here. I'll go and get some trousers so I can go over and see his mate Barry Grant. Tell him what's happened. Teddy! You go and sit down, love. We'll sort the breakfast. All right. Ah, oh, Mrs. Jordash. I know it's early, but I wanted to catch everybody before they got underway for the day. Ah, oh, is this about the wheelie bins? Uh, yes. You see, I'm afraid that time is against us. They're coming to empty these bins on Friday, and I wanted to get our feelings, as expressed in these signed letters, on the authorities' desk by tomorrow at the latest. Well, I have read the letter, but, um, Beth and I think the bins are okay. Ah, well, yes, I, I, I'm sure that initially they may appear quite smart, and uh, indeed the word practical does spring to mind, but, uh, do you realise that it's your responsibility to wheel that thing from your back garden out to the front? No, I didn't. Well, not many people do. So if you forget to wheel the thing out onto your front path, no waste disposal operative, as they call themselves these days, is prepared to do that for you. So consequently, you are going to be left with a malodorous, overflowing bin full of putrefying waste for another entire week. I think I'd get used to taking it out. Ah, oh, but the weight of the thing, Mrs. Jordash. Have you tried pushing a full one? No, are they heavy to push? Oh. Well, I, I haven't actually tried one myself, but I have done a few calculations. And based on the average family output of waste, as outlined in this consumer booklet I've obtained, you are going to have to push a huge amount David. of rub... David! Uh, Teddy's in the house. What? Can you give us a hand? Uh, yes, 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 of course. I'll be right with you. Could you excuse me a moment, please, M Mrs. Jordash? Mr. Crosby, I think we'll keep the bin. Sorry. Uh, but, Mrs. Jordash, please, think of Trafalgar. D-Day. Our tenacity and fortitude is legendary. I'm sorry. Come on, David. Uh, all right. I'll, uh, I'll be back. He's in the kitchen. Uh, I'm not being funny, but I don't really want you in here. I'll be Barry. I don't care who you with. This is my house. I have been rehabilitated, you know. Come on in, Dave. Thank you. 
So, Eddie, what's the situation? I came downstairs, and this fella's in there cooking breakfast. Ah. Yeah. Look, I do know him, so um, I'll have a word. Morning, Rosie. Can you get ready for school, please? I want to watch this. Hey, it's not a peep show. Go on. It's like living in the twilight zone here, isn't it? I mean, he could have asked me how I wanted my eggs, couldn't he? Oh, Eddie. What's up, mate? Nothing. Terry. Terry, do you know where you are? In my house. Sue and Danny. I want them. Who's Sue and Danny? wife and son. They died a while ago in tragic circumstances, I believe. He lived here once with them, you see. Oh, the poor bugger. So was he flipped over? No, no, he's just under immense pressure. He did come back here once before, I understand. They found him sitting in the back garden. Mm. You see, this place obviously has strong emotional ties for him. I'd get him to the docks if I were you. Yes, that would be the best thing, I think. Not going to be staying here all day, is he? Look, they'll take him as soon as they can. Well, I can't leave you and Eileen on your own with him. Oh, he broke in, remember? Who knows what he might oh, do? Oh, come on, Ed. The man's not well. Look, those two will get him sorted. Look, you go and see Marianne Dwyer. You make mix in lumber. Might help if she gets her job back. All right, all right. Terry, is there anyone you would like us to get in touch with? Sue and Danny. I'm being with them. We're going to have to get him out of here. OK, yeah. We'll take him to the flat. I'll get Jimmy to keep an eye on him. I think he needs someone a bit more professional. He needs medical attention, and the sooner the better. Right. Well, let's get him out of here and I'll think about it. Hmm. Morning, Mandy. Been on the nippy side. Yes, um, I'll get your money for you. Here you are. <laughs> Do you mind if I come in and check it? I'd rather you didn't. But, Mandy, it's freezing. You don't leave friends out in the cold. We're not friends. Like you said, it's business. <sighs> we can be both. <sighs> Every penny there. But what about next week? and the week after. Well, that's my responsibility. Well, it's mine as well. Did you think about my offer? Yeah, for all of two minutes. You can forget it. <laughs> all of two minutes, eh? I'll bet you stayed awake half the night just wondering how you could wipe those debts out, didn't you? Mandy, I just want to help. I think it's a very generous offer. Look, I've got lots to do. Uh, do you know about compound interest, Mandy? Because I did some figures last night. And unless you win the pools or the lottery, like you said, I'm going to be coming to this front door for years. I think we need to talk. Yeah, well, can we talk next week? <laughs> Mandy, sweetheart, I'll stay out here until you let me in. I don't care how long it takes. It's no good you pretending you don't have debts. You do. And they're going to go on and on. Unless we can work something out. Thank you. And a nice warm drink wouldn't go amiss.
Would the doctor? I don't need one. I'm fine. I just want Sue and Danny. We won't be there long, Elsa. No. I know the near. Let them go. Let me go! Look, Terry. No one's gonna hurt you. I promise. Leave me, please. You're early, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Uh, Mick said he needed the van cleaning out today. Oh, very keen, I must say. Yeah, well, he's a good boss, isn't he, eh? I mean, if he hadn't given me this job, I'd have probably been back inside now. And Carol and our Gary, well, hey, I don't really like to think about it. Hey, there's a picket line there, matey, you know. Hello. You have help, then? Job hunting, as a matter of fact. You might be hanging on in there by the skin of your teeth, but I'm out. Yeah, well, uh, that's what I want to talk about. I think you might have been caught up in some uh, skullduggery. What do you mean? There's info in there which we use to our advantage, but I'm afraid you were a casualty. Let's just say we found out about the company phone tapping us. Oh? Yeah, it's all in there. Some strictly confidential documents we came across. How? That's not the problem. The point is, we were playing management at their own game, and uh, we mentioned your name a few times, gave a few dodgy bits of information. And I suppose you led management to believe that I was on your side? We said a lot of things. We just didn't expect you to get in lumber. But we didn't tap the phones. Neither did I. But you knew about it. It is illegal, you know? OK. So what next? I mean, what is this stuff? These documents prove life to tech what's happened in the union office phones. We're going to tell management we know, and we want our deal recognised. They won't buy that. They might if we threaten to go to the newspapers or the police. Now, if you come in with us, it'll support our case, and then we'll back you if you want to get your job back. It's a good offer. I'll think about it. Fair enough. There's copies of the stuff we're going to take to them. Oh, don't be too long thinking, will you? We want to get this finished with tomorrow. With a bit of luck, we might have our members back to work, and you might get your job back. I just want to be friends, Mandy. Why me? Because I like you. I find you attractive. What's wrong with that? I mean, I've got something you want, money, and you've got something I want. Oh, I'm sorry, but I don't think so. Well, look at it another way. Everything has a value, right? Right? The hard bits, trying to put a price on whatever it is. Now, some things are easy. Cars, clothes, whatever. But what about... What about your body, Mandy? How much would you put on that? What price to clear your debts? Look, I'm going to finish the cleaning. Our Leo and Gemma are going to look great on the big day. Look at that. Yeah. Hey, you should have them in them kilts and that. You know what I mean? Look dead push. Oh, yeah. Can you see our Leo in a kilt? <laughs> hey, listen, Mick, uh, I was wondering, uh, couldn't let me have some time off tomorrow afternoon, could you? Hey? Well, what's up? Well, nothing really. It's just that I've got the Alecki man coming round, you know, and I'm not sure if our Gary's going to be around for him. I'll only be an hour or so. Yeah, no problems. Cheers, nice one, mate. Hi. Hey, Maz. Hey. Got the wedding rings here. Oh, let's have a look. These are great. I hope mine's been altered properly. What's going on? Oh, no, yeah, you can't do that. It's bad luck. Since when? I don't know. I read it in Titbits years ago. So, listen, uh, and enjoying the work front? Well, I've registered with a personnel management agency. That's a start, isn't it? Yeah, but I think between Nitrotech and Eddie Banks, I'll be lucky if I get a secretarial job. Oh, come on, that's a bit hard on Eddie. I mean, he's only defending union members. Yeah, but he came in before and told me that him and his mate Joey basically set me up. What? It's a long story, but they made out to light show that I was on the side of the union, which is why I had to leave. Eddie set you up? Well, yeah. I'm going to see him. To say what? No one does that to my wife. Well said, Mick. Look, the last thing he needs is egging on. Mick! Mick! You are so 
unpredictable. You fly off the handle. I'm just going to tell him what I think about him, that's all. I don't want you getting involved, Mick. Yeah, well, I am involved. But you're going to be my wife. I don't want people walking all over you. Look, if I'd wanted to fight this, I would do. Some things just aren't worth it. Well, just put the boots on the other foot, will you? Do you think if it was Eddie's wife, he would just sit round his backside and let me get away with it? Oh, so it's back to the caveman mentality now, is it? Stand up and be counted. Hey, what are you playing at, Eddie? Getting out of the sack. I didn't believe you could do something like that. We didn't expect it to turn out this way, Mick. She's got the sack, Eddie. Me and you are mates. I helped you out with those Kershaw people. I ended up an Aussie, and I'd do the same again for you. What's going on here? Did you know that they were behind Marianne getting the push? Mick, we're involved in an industrial dispute. Her company wants to screw the workers as much as they can. We did everything by the rule book, but I'll tell you, mate, they used dirty tricks. They tapped our phones. Can you believe that? <laughs> Invaded our privacy. I know they tapped the phones, and she was against all that. But the point is this. Hold on. You knew about it? You knew what they were up to? Well, yeah, but... So where's the mates thing going now, then, Mick? How could you keep that from us? Look, I'm stuck in the middle here. Look, it's Lytro's to blame. Yeah, you could have picked on someone else to stitch up, Eddie. Mick, we didn't do it to get Marianne the sack, mate. Are we still mates, like? Yeah. And the offer's still on the table for Marianne. What's all this? We're going to tell management we know about this phone tapping, Lark, and we've said we'll back Marianne if she wants to get a job back. Oh, well, I'll have some of that. I'm thinking about it, Mick. Don't rush me. You know, if it means you're getting your job back, it's definitely worth a shout. I'm thinking about it. I hate the sound of vacuum cleaners. I have to leave the room when my mother gets ours out. I don't want you to dismiss my offer out of hand. Can you please not go on about it? I can't just jump into bed with somebody I don't even know. Mandy, you don't really have a man in your life, do you? And well, that's unnatural. Everybody needs somebody. I think you might have been a bit rash in making up your mind so quickly. Look, you don't want these debts hanging over you forever, do you? We only have to be nice to each other. What's the score here? Nothing. Mandy was a bit upset. Was it him that upset you? I'm not upset. Look, can you go, please? Yeah, now. Ooh, you look vicious when you're angry. Bye, Mandy. See you soon. Bye. What was he doing, touching you? I don't want to talk about this. Well, I thought he wasn't coming in again. He just came in. And? What do you mean, and? Well, it all looked a bit cosy to me. Oh, thanks very much. I didn't see you trying to get out of his clutches. I wasn't in his clutches. And what would have happened if I hadn't come back, eh? No wonder you didn't want me here when he came round. What's that supposed to mean? Well, I think he comes round a little bit too often for it to be just business. Or maybe he's here for another reason. Oh, I don't know how you can even think it. It's not what I think. It's what I saw. All right, Jimbo. All right, Greg. Where you going, mate? I am just off to uh, meet the team, you know. One last check up on the arrangements for tomorrow. All right, hey, uh, listen, uh, get, um, I was thinking maybe I was a bit rash, you know, knocking your back and all that. Like, uh, it's just I could do with something coming in, you know, a bit of extra bit of cash and that. You know, Crimbo coming up, know what I mean? Yeah, well, I'd love to have you with us, Jimmy, but this really isn't a job for you, is it? We're going to, don't remember. Oh, Greg, I thought you would have seen sense on that one, mate. Look. This is the one and only time I'll be going to though, because it's the one and only time I'll be doing a job like this. <sighs> Look, I've got a sick wife and a lad to bring up. Is that why you're doing it, like? Yeah. I mean, this is the one that's going to set me up for life, isn't it? Yeah, listen, now. Um, don't suppose you fancy anything to calm your nerves for tomorrow, do you? You know, well, but a Charlie, anything like that, like. Jimmy, look, I've told you, I'm not a dickhead. I don't do drugs. I need a clear head. 
I'll tell you what I will do, though. Tomorrow, I might join you in that club of yours for a glass of champagne. See you later. Uh, see you. I'd have thought they'd have sent him down the Aussie. So would I. Hello, Terry. You all right? What happened? Well, I told the doctor everything. That he wasn't eating, that he was shouting at people the whole lot. Good, good. Has he referred him for a psychiatric opinion? Has he, have? He asked him a few questions, give him the quick once-over, and then wrote out a bloody prescription. Well, what do you expect? Yeah, look, pills. Hmm. Antidepressants. Well, will they work, like? I guess they'll work all right, but he won't feel any benefit for about ten days, and even then it's not really treating the problem, it's just delaying it. Well, how can we look after him when he's like this for that long, guy? Eh? Useless. Bloody useless. Hey, Teddy! Tess! Teddy, come here, mate. Mm -hmm. Want some? Mm -hmm. Look at the state of him. He's totally off his head. Mm -hmm. What am I supposed to do now? Next on for the return of Travelog, and in the first programme of the new series, Pete McCarthy goes in search of the real Hawaii. That. Don't worry, it's only now, Mug. I'm sorry, man. Yeah. You seen the way Marianne's got me organised? We're not moving till next week, because she's already got me packing. I didn't realise we had so much gear. See who's going to be wearing the keks in your house. Ah, in me, defo. That's, that's all right with Marianne, Lee. <laughs> hey, listen, Mick, uh, be all right if I go to bog. What's wrong with you? What do you mean? It's the second time in half an hour. <sighs> Must be excited about your wedding, eh? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, listen, is it... Still all right for me to get off this, have you? Yeah, no props. Cheers, to you. Hey, Dwight, there's packing to be done, you know. I'm just going to go and get a packet of mints and then I'm going to go over and see Eddie Banks. Oh, make sure you do the right thing, eh? We could use the money. Don't put pressure on me, Mick. Oh, I'm sorry, it's just that with the new mortgage, and if you don't get a job soon... I'm... I thought we were going to stay positive. All right, I will, I promise. Mm. See you later. Yeah, see you. Hey, uh, come in. <coughs> Joey! Feels like a good day today. Oh, I wouldn't get too cocky. Yeah, but management will be in a corner. Won't they, Ed? That's when they're at the most dangerous. Fear nothing. Fear no one. Have we got Dwyer with us? Well, I'm not sure. Mick came round and had a right go at me yesterday. Everything's going our way. It's even the right time of the year. This week, 77 years ago. What are you on about? Russian Revolution, love. Joey thinks he was born after his time. Oh, wouldn't be going on about socialism. It's finished. Not near, Rosie. Oh, hello. Come in. Oh. Hi. All right. We were just going to come round and see you. Find out if you were in with us. No, I've decided not to. Oh, come on. You might get your job back. I don't think there's much chance of that. Are you sure? Yeah. 
I don't really want to deal with them again. I don't really trust them anymore. I can understand that, love. If I go along to a meeting on the side of the union, they'll be convinced I was working with you all along. Can we talk you into it? No. What about these, um, files you acquired? They're just copies. Keep them as a souvenir. Yeah. <laughs> right then. Bye. Best of luck. Ta. See ya. So what are you going to do about work now? Well, I just have to see what turns up. I feel sorry for you, love. You know, getting married next week, buying a house and only one of you working. I'd be tearing me hair out. Yeah, Mick is. I'm not really sure how we'll manage. Yeah, well, you do, don't you? Mind you, we put our wedding back twice because we couldn't afford it. Did you? Oh, why? It was me nan's fault. <laughs> we all used to go down the pub on a Friday night and she used to whisper in me ear, Rosemary, don't forget, girl, love walks out the door as poverty walks in. Look, I better get going. I'll see you. All right, love. See ya. Right, thanks, love. So what did he say? That will be ages. She doesn't really want us waiting round here. Says it's normal to take him to his GP. Well, he's not normal, is he? She just kept asking me questions. I mean, what he was up to, what yeah, type yeah. of things he did. Well, I hope he laid it on a bit. Well, I didn't have to, did I? I just told them how it was. Teddy. Teddy, hang on a minute. Yeah, I'll sort it out for you. Listen, if you check him out, can you take him in? Look, they said they might need to see him, but that means sod all over to me. Right, we're staying here until someone sorts him out. Teddy, just... Teddy. Just a little bit slower, eh, mate? All that, please. Oh, hello, Matt. Wouldn't it all fit in your new bin? <laughs> Good Lord, you don't think I'd use that, do you? It's empty. Of course it is. What's going on, then? Look around you, Matt. What do you see? It will all sort, really. Houses, gardens. Ah, yes. But what you're also seeing is a visual representation of the lack of moral fibre in this country. Acceptance of weedy bins. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at it. They've all given up. No support, not even for my own daughter and son-in-law. Even our Rosie and Eddie, eh? Yes, I'm afraid so. You see, Mo, these things have been foisted upon the community. And what's the response? Lethargy, apathy, passivity. Do you see this? Look, that is a symbol of fortitude and resistance, a refusal to be walked all over. And people can mock and say that I'm making a mountain out of a molehill, but I'll tell you something, Mo. This whole business is clear evidence to me of the total disaffection of the modern generation. Oh, I'm defo with you. They'll walk all over you if you let them. Oh, yes, they will. And that is why I shall never, ever use one of those things. But will they take the plazzy bags? Oh, they've got to. I shall be waiting for them when they arrive. If I'm around, I'll support you. Bravo, Mo. Thank you. Thank you. ta Stick to the points in this order, right? They'll be keen to see what we've got on the table. But don't rush in. I don't know why we just don't hit them with the evidence we've got. Because all these negotiations are like a game of cat and mouse. Everybody wants to save face. We've got to go back to the union and say we won. They've got to go back to their board of directors and say they won. Even though we've snotted them. The rules of the game. All right, Mo, how's things, girl? All right, Todd, how's the strike going? They're hoping to get it sorted today. How come? Because we've got management over a battle. Now, where have I heard that one before? Every union thinks that. Yeah, but we're not talking out of our bums on this one. We've got it sewn up. You've sewn your bum up. <laughs> How'd you put up with it, Ed? I usually put garlic around the doors, but she gets in through the windows. Hey, that's my sister you're talking about. So is it really going to be finished today? Defo. Let's see, eh? Yeah, well, I hope so. It's gone on long enough. Well, if we can finish it, love, we will. Come here, Joey. It's a battle we go. Yeah, let's give it to him. Still can't get hold of this doctor. She says one of us might as well go home. It's no point in us both staying here all day. Well, do you want me to stay? No, nah, I'll leave them. None of them here. I can't find any of them. What are you going on about her? None of them here. They've all left me. What? I don't know. He was talking about Sue and Danny. 
Just forget about it later for now. Oh, God, who's fault? Hey, let's sit down, eh, mate? I'm talked up. I'm left all alone. Left all alone. Keep it down, will you, Teddy? Come to the front of the queue, though, wasn't it? I want to see the daddy! I want to see What are you doing? I said I'd be a witness for David Crosby. He wants them to take his bin back. I say, no, it's a bit over the top, isn't it? But it means a lot to him, and I'm on his side. Oh. Hold on. All right, Dave. Glad you can make it, Mo. Surprised to see you here, Rosie. I thought you'd rather rescinded your right of protest. Yeah, well, I uh, just came out with her. I've been on this sort of thing before, you know, Dave. Me and a few others made a big barrier across the road by us to try and stop people speeding. Uh, yeah, but she almost got arrested clobbering some bloke from the council. You'd have done the same, Dave. He was a cocky little guest. Yes, yes, well. So, what's the plan, then? Quite simple, really. They collect my refuse in these tried and tested, manageable and, may I say, user-friendly bin bags. Here, here. Excuse me. I don't think you'll find anything in there. Except a bit of fresh air. I say, you seem to have forgotten my rubbish. Excuse me, I have refuse here to be collected. Orders? That's the answer the Nazis gave. Just throw it in the back, Dave. I will. Can you stay out of this? No, that's a splendid idea. Damn and blast! I strapped that toilet to you. Hey, I'm sorry, Nick. Have you got a dodgy stomach or what? Yeah, yeah, I uh, had a bit of a niffy meal last night in a chippy, you know. Mm. Listen, uh, you did remember I've got the lucky man coming this heavy. How could I forget? You do nothing but remind me. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, uh, can I go then? Yeah, as long as you're back for the evening, Seth, like. Oh, no problem. Defo. I'll be here. Listen, um, if you hang on a minute, I'll, uh, I'll walk part the way with you. I've got to pick up Marianne's car, you know. Oh, I'd love to, but I don't want to miss the Alecky man. All right. OK. See you later. ta -da. See you, Marianne. All right, Maz. Hi. Now, listen, I reckon we'll be able to make the mortgage payments each month, but I have to increase the prices. Me? No, hold on, babe. Now, a 10% increase doesn't sound too savage, does it? Keep the wolf from the door. Mick, we need to talk. Hey, have you been worrying your little head over things again? No, my little head is thinking maybe we should delay things. What? Just until we get more settled financially. <sighs> Hold on. You asking me to call the weather off? We could put it back. I mean, just a bit. We're a week away from getting married and you're asking me to call it off? Well, think about it. We're going into something under pressure. Love. Love walks out the door as poverty walks in. What are you talking about, poverty? I've worked out a way that we can keep our heads above water. Unless you've got something else on your mind. You don't want to marry me. I do. It's just... It's what? If it was just about money, you'd say don't move in the house, because that's where the money's going. So what are you trying to tell me? I'm saying... We're starting off a marriage with things up in the air. It's too much too soon. Well, for who? I'm all right. I won't have anything that's me in this marriage. I'll be smothered by you, and I know you mean well, but I need my identity, Mick. I need work. Otherwise, I'll just be a housewife, and I need more than that. I might have known. It's the job again. Well, everything was fine until Lydratec pulled the plug. So our happiness depends on whether you're getting on in work? Bloody hell. Career women. Mick, wait. No, you're all right. I'll go and pick your car up, and you can drive around and look for another job. Hey, Mick, I'm glad this light you take. Don't bloody talk to me about light you take. My life's going to pieces because of that place, and I couldn't give a toss about it. I don't want to hear its name ever again. God, he's got his knickers in a twist, has me. And I was only going to say I'm glad he didn't get in the way of our friendship. Well, you certainly touched a raw nerve there. 
I've never seen him act that way before. Is my watch fast or is he late? Before he's late. He'll probably come up with some cock and bull story about having to talk to head office. Clarify a few things. I hate this waiting, Mark. I feel like I'm going to get the cane when the headmaster comes out. That's the whole idea, mate. Power. You don't bother how late you're going to be when you're in the driving seat. Yeah, a couple of hours and we'll be in the driving seat. Joey, it's not like that anymore. What we need here is a worker and management joint committee. Let's try and build a platform for talking with them. But they want to kick butts. And when we get in there, we talk calmly. No more up the workers. I want to walk out of there with the results, because we've got a good ace up our sleeve. See you next week. At 2 o'clock? Afternoon. I didn't expect to see you here, Eddie. Yeah, I'm uh, assisting Joey. Sorry I'm late. I have to speak to head office, clarify a few points. Shall we? Listen, son, you haven't seen my other jeans anywhere, have you? No, we haven't been in the bag wash yet. Probably still dirty. Do you want a drink? No, no, Tal. Listen, son, I've got to go out. Where? Yeah, I'm grafting hard, son. I've got to get as much cash together, you know, to try and get us out of this hole. I want me, you and your mum together somewhere nice, you know, a bit of space around us. You'd like that, wouldn't you? You know, for when she gets out the Aussie. Well, yeah. Oh, there's me lift. Oh, hey, and listen, uh, when I go out, I don't want you to answer the door or the phone to anyone. Just act like you weren't here, all right? Why? Where are you going? Look, it doesn't matter. Just trust your dad, all right? And if anyone ever asks, I was here with you all afternoon. She got that? I was here all afternoon. Good going, son. Look, I'll bring you the takeaway on the way home tonight, all right? Ta. Catch you later. No, Mr. Foy, you listen. Our members have been out on legal industrial action for too long, and you know as well as I do, it can't be doing anyone any good having scab labour running a place. The casual workforce has had to be employed to keep production at a sufficiently competitive level. So we still have a viable company for when you return to work. Oh, don't be giving us all that garbage. Mr. Foy, we recognise that the company wants to keep off its profits, and we're quite willing to work alongside you on that when we return to work. Um, I'm sorry? Oh, yeah. We feel that it would be better for us all if management and the shop floor were to meet together on a regular basis to discuss the uh, work practices. That's all very Euro-friendly, but we're not even close to resolving the present industrial action. Oh, I think we can sort out the issue of performance-related pay, new contracts, and have a works council. <laughs> I don't know how you think this is going to come about. We intend to go ahead with all the new changes, with or without the striking workforce. We do have the law on our side. Now, since you don't have anything new to say, I may as well draw this meeting to a close. Well, just wait there a minute, Mr. Foy. If you don't mind. It's all very well using the law to screw the workforce while you make your profits. I am not listening to this. You've used the law to your advantage. But I think some people might be interested in your illegal methods. What are you talking about? Transcripts of recorded private phone conversations between Joseph Woods, shop steward, and Edward Banks, employee. Meeting still on, is it? Mo, Holly will be home soon. I'll leave you with your mates. All right, sis, hey. I'll follow you over. Mo, I wanted to ask you, would you be interested in becoming an associate member of the Brookside Residents Association? Me? Yes. <laughs> Good Lord, look at that. So much for the courtesies of the road. I know, yeah. Ah, uh, anyway, you see, look, 
You are a close relative of a member, and quite honestly, every additional signature we can get on our protest adds fuel to our cause. Yeah, that's all right by me. I'll be honoured. Hey, hang on. Someone should have a word with him. He's going to hate somebody rushing round like that. He is worked up about something, isn't he? Oh, the bloody pickets! I forgot about the picket line! Sod it. Just drive straight through. Unions. Marianne, you in there? Yeah. Listen, uh, about before. Mick. No, before you say anything. No, listen, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry too. Where have you been? I picked a car up and drove over to Otterspool. It's needed time to think. And? I know what I want to do now. Yeah, I've made up my mind as well. And? I'm sorry about before. I've just had too much going on in my head, but so much has happened so quickly. And well... If you still want me, I still want to marry you next week. 100% you are? 110%. I'm marrying you, Mick. That's all there is to it. Come here. Yes! <laughs> These pieces of paper you have are merely circumstantial. They don't prove a thing. Why would we want to record your private phone conversations? I'm no lawyer, but I think if we went to the union solicitor, he'd tell us that we had a very good case. Well, why don't you do just that? Because I'd sooner go to the papers. A firm like Lightrotech with such a good reputation would get a lot of publicity. And I'm sure the public would want to know who authorised this, uh, well, criminal act. How many of your members are aware of these uh, transcripts? None at the moment. Is there? Not to my knowledge. I don't know why we're having this conversation anyway. My sentiments exactly. You were right. We should have gone to the press. We'll go there now. Uh, look, gentlemen, uh, maybe both parties have got themselves into a bit of a corner. Perhaps we should talk find an amicable solution. We talk about pay, contracts, and the Works Council. No way. How come I'm always that time here? Hey, do you reckon the civil liberties people will be interested in all? Uh, look, all right, pay contracts, and I will take the suggestion of a Works Council to the board. I'm sure the members will be happy to know that things are progressing. Let's hope we're back in work within, uh, what, days, I hope? Yes, that would be sensible. Right, I'll be in touch, and we should meet early next week. Suits us. Oh, uh, I believe this is company property. We haven't finished with that. I do believe that you have. It's OK. We've got our own copies. Like I said, we'll meet next week. Good. You give us what we want, and no one need know about the phone tapping. Oh. And we want an assurance that the phones won't be interfered with again, because next time, we do go straight to the police. See ya. <laughs> that was brilliant, Ed. Let's see what we get on paper first, eh? What? <laughs> All right. Good bit of work then, eh? Yeah. I mean, it's a pity Marianne lost her job and I might have lost Mick as a mate, like... But... Uh, there's always casualties, Ed. You told me that. I'm another. Hey? I'm no shop steward. You showed in there. You're the man for the job. Ah, you'll get better. Nah, I'll be standing down next week. I don't think anyone will oppose you if you stand again. What's that? Where is it? 
Where is it? You two on your knees now. Where is it? Jesus, get out of it. A Channel 4 video called Brookside The Women featuring classic clips from the first 12 years in the close together with some brand new material is out now in the shops. You've seen the papers, have you? Don't bother with them much. Oh, got all this armed robbery stuff splashed all over them. Oh, yeah. I heard something about that. Oh, well, yeah. Wouldn't be someone I know had anything to do with it, would it? Well, it could have been anyone, couldn't it? it? Says here that some little old cleaning woman got knocked about by the robbers. Hey, you don't want to believe all that rubbish you read in the rags, do you? They're always exaggerating, aren't they? Says here she nearly had an heart attack. That could have ended up a murder, that. But it didn't, though, did it? Says here they only got away with 200 quid. What you reckon to that, eh? Was it worth nearly killing some old granny just for 200 quid? Oh, yeah. Can I have some money to go and sell? You're always wanting money, you. I only wanted enough for a burger. Here you are. And remember, that's after to be grafted out for that. Ah, see ya. Nice crisp new notes then, Wendy. Be easy to trace those for the business, you know. That's why I'm getting rid of them quick. What, by giving them to your lad? Oh, that's real hard man stuff, that is, isn't it, eh? Letting him take the chance and fence your gear for you. Why don't you just do one, eh? Yeah. Can I book at all? I suppose. <sighs> Dear. Hey, see that Eddie Banks is out of Aussie, eh? He almost got killed in that light on second robbery. Mm. Splashed all over the papers, isn't he? Have a go, Eddie, they're calling him. All right, is he? Lucky for him, he is. Just about. He was saying they hospitalised some little old cleaner woman. I mean, what kind of scum would do that to a little old lady? Yeah. Makes you wonder what the world's coming to, doesn't it? Well, he was wearing a Prince Charles mask, that's for starters. Um, I can't remember much else. He could have killed you, Dad. You've got to be able to do better than that. You weren't there, son. You don't know how fast and confusing it was. I mean, it's not every day you get a smack in the gob from the heir to the throne, is it? <laughs> Anything will be a help. Well, he was big, that's for sure. And he had an accent, um, pretty much local, I suppose. And the only other thing I could really say for sure is uh, he was a coloured lad, you know, black. What are you doing? I've got to tighten the nut on your ball valve, my lord. You what? Her ladyship said it's been dripping in the night, keeping her awake. Hey, it's me that keeps her awake of a night. Hey, listen, how much more skivvying am I supposed to be doing for your other half? Listen, she's very house proud, James, and you're lucky to have a job. Remember, 
So just get on with it. Any luck? I said it's sorted, didn't I? Could you do the outside guttering at the back when you're ready? It's choked with leaves. Oh, I'll look out the stables after that, shall I, ma'am? That wouldn't have been a note of sarcasm, would it? Lowest form of wit from the lowest form of life. What you'd expect. Hey, I'm gone. How am I supposed to get down? Oi! Right, then. Thank you very much, Mr Banks. I'm sorry I couldn't be of any more help. Don't worry. All these little bits of information come together in the end. It does smack of somebody with inside info, though, doesn't it? It does look that way. Someone who knew there'd be cash around in that particular place at that particular time. And we're looking for a big fella, by the look of it. I'm black. Wish us luck, then. At least nobody can point the finger at me, eh? Oh, come here, we'll get the 20 past bus if we go now. Hang on, I just want to put this in my mum's purse. What for? Well, she's dead short on money again, so I've been leaving her some of mine, you know, in her pockets and that. I got nearly 20 quid in school for the last lot of stuff we nicked. Don't put too much in, though. It's just, just there's something going on. Well, should I put a tenner in? Stick a five in. You can always put another one in tomorrow. Um, I hope you're not ready in Mum's purse, Rachel. She left it out. I was just putting it away, safe for her. Right. I'm going to work in a minute when I find my keys. Are you catching the 20 past? Yeah, but I'm on time. We'll walk round with you. Right, well, come on, cos I'm going now. OK. I'll leave another five in the biscuit tin. Hello, you two. All right. Hey, Mum. What are you up to? Oh, we were thinking about going into town. You're always going into town these days. Well, I finished all my homework and we only want you to go in for a burger. I'm sorry, love, I haven't got any money to give you. It's all right. My old fella gave me a tenner. That'll cover us. Well, if you're sure. I feel awful not being able to give you anything. Well, let me check. I'll just see if I've got a spare 50p. It's no problem. We're mates. We share things. Where's Lee's going with you, is he? Uh, yeah, we're meeting him there. See you. Hang on. Rachel. Rachel. Hey, what are you doing with that, love? Well, we've got to send it off in style, haven't we, mate? <laughs> hey, listen, has uh, Marianne got any more gossip on the robbery? No, not really. She's just glad that nobody got killed, you know? Mm. Yeah, one more for you. Oh, nice one. So, uh, with me being the best man, like, do I get a chance to prove it with Marianne? <laughs> You'll have to fight me for her, with flamethrowers, tanks, all kinds. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, let's have a shift at the ring. Hey, have you written your speech yet? Yeah, two and a half hours long it's going to be. It's all about making his ex girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Two and a half minutes will be long enough for that, you know. <laughs> there you go. Ooh, nice one. Oh, a hey, very nice. Hey, you'll get a few bob for that in a pawn shop. <laughs> 220 quid it cost me, but all I can afford. Anyway, there you go, sin. You best keep it till the wedding, mate. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll look after it. 220 quid, eh? It's only 20 quid more than them scumbags got away with at the robbery, isn't it? Yeah, it's bad business all round, that, isn't it? Oh. And it's almost seeing off an old girl for 200 quid, eh? Anyway, I can't stand around here, mate. I've got to finish my ironing. Well, a woman's work's never done, eh, Miss Jones? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you're going for this best man business in a big way, then, eh? Yeah, well, I think Mick deserves the best, you know. I'll be being mates for yonks. I'm going to prove to be the best, 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 best man there's ever been. Well, that's easy for you to say. <laughs> Hello, there. Are you the owner, mate? Uh, no, I only work here. Uh, Mick Johnson's the owner. Does a Marianne Dwyer live here? She's the person I need to speak to, really. Yeah, she's uh, Mick's fiance. Yeah. yeah, they live in the flat above the shop, you know. I'm Detective Sergeant Sheridan, Manor Park Police Station. I'd like to go straight up if that's okay. Uh, yeah, I'm sure Mick wouldn't mind. Yeah, know. straight through the back and up the stairs. Thanks. What was all that about? Ah, routine, probably. You know, after the robbery. Oh. What with Marianne working there and that. Mm. Oh, well. well, better get this lad in the van. I'll be outside if you need me. Hello. 
Hi, yeah. How are you? How have you know? You look busy. Yeah, well, uh, it's for Mick. He's getting married. He's asked me to be best man. You haven't been to see us lately? No, well, I didn't want to interrupt you and Kenny. You wouldn't have interrupted anything. When you saw me in the kitchen with him, I was trying my hardest to get rid of him. You jump to conclusions too quickly, you do. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry. It's just that, well, it looked like, well, you know. So you're going shopping then? Yeah, I've just found five pounds I didn't know I had in the biscuit tin and another one in my purse. Thought I was broke and had all this money sitting there all the time. Yeah, it's nice when that happens, isn't it? Maybe the little money fairy slipped in when you weren't looking. It wasn't you put it there, was it? <sighs> Me? I haven't got any cash to spare. Have you lost the girls? Oh, they're more likely to be taking it out than putting it in. Better get off. It's no wonder Beth keeps telling me off for not managing the money better. I found five pounds I didn't know I had the other week as well. Yeah, well, if it continues, let me know, won't you? I can do it a few spare, Bob. See ya. All right, Jim. All right. Hi, hi. What's with the surgical appliance? Great, isn't it? Got to spend my birthday cleaning Barry's gutters. Keep Lady Muck happy. Yeah, well, happy birthday. I'll tell you what, you don't look too bad for 50. 43, if you don't <laughs> mind. Yeah, well, I bet there's been a few times this past year you didn't think you'd see another birthday, lad, haven't you? You're not wrong there. So, um, you still have to smack, then? Yeah, still clean, yeah. But I tell you, it's not easy sometimes. Still, I can make a few bob. Flogging bits and pieces to the divvies who are still stuck on it, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, well, selling it is worse than using it. Yeah, all right, I know, I know. But what can I do? I need the money, don't I? Yeah. Hey, I don't force them to buy it. Anyway, I'm going to be finished with it one of these days. Look at this. Great, isn't it, eh? 43 years of age and all I'm good for is cleaning gutters. What a waste. Yeah, well, at least you haven't got off your head like poor Terry Sullivan. Oh, still out of it, is he? Yeah, he's in some psychiatric place. Me and Barry are going to see him later on. They'd go off me head, mate. Yeah. I mean, what do you do about them places? I mean, you can't take Lucas Aiden grapes in, can you? No idea. Still, better get off, get these gutters done, keep her ladyship happy. Yeah. See ya. Oh, I, um, I would give you the hand, but I'm busy with the wedding arrangements, you know, for Mick. I am the best man, like. Oh, right. Yeah. The, uh, busy's it there, you know. What, in with Mick? No, they've come to see Marianne. About the robbery, probably. Well, what what's it got to do with her? Who knows? Hmm. We'll see. Cheers, Jim. Hey, yeah. Uh, maybe it was Marianne who knocked the place off. Trying to get them back for giving her the push. I'll have to tap here for a few, Bobby. Well, does being interviewed make me a possible suspect? No, no, it just means you may be able to help us with our inquiries. Well, she doesn't exactly come over as a possible armed robber, now, does she? You'd be surprised, Mr. Johnson. Now, can I just confirm that you had a, a disagreement with Lytratech before you left? Well, we didn't exactly see eye to eye over a few things. Well, does that make me someone with a grudge against the company? Marianne, just saying yes or no will get this over quicker. I see there's a special occasion in the offing. Yeah, we're getting married tomorrow. And we're up to our next trying to get things ready, you know. Expensive job these days, weddings. I remember mine. It was... Could we just get on, please? Sorry. Now, the incident took place at 4.55pm yesterday. Can you just confirm your whereabouts at that time, please? Yeah, I was here, getting Leo and Gemma's tea ready. And would you have a witness who could testify to that? Well, yes, I suppose Sinbad, the window cleaner. He called in for his money. So you weren't here together, then? Not around that time, no. Do you remember where you were, sir? Well, wherever it was, it wasn't at Lytral Tech. You were picking up my car, weren't you? Uh, yeah, from the garage. And then you came straight home? Not straight away, no. I uh, drove out to Otterspool. A long walk. By yourself? By myself, yeah. So would there be anyone who can vouch for your movements during this time? Hey, look, I don't have to answer stuff like that. I'm not an armed robber. And I'm not having you or anyone else saying that I am. I mean, I thought you'd just come to talk to Marianne. It's just routine. That's fine. That's fine. It's just for the record. I have to ask, it was a serious crime. So... Will you be here if I need to come back for further inquiries? Look, we're getting married tomorrow. We haven't got time for all this. It's OK, Mick. Look, normally I would be here, but not tonight. I'm staying at the Central Hotel with my mum and dad. You could reach me there if it was urgent. Oh, that's great. Thanks. That'll do for now.
So, what do you think? Um, well, I'm not sure it's your colour, really. Bit of a battered image, though, for the waitresses, isn't it? We've got a good image. Don't you think that's a bit too skimpy? I reckon the better the girls look, the better the customers are going to feel. That's what the customers might be tempted to feel that worries me. I think they'll like it. Oh, hiya. All right, girls. Really to get going, are you? Aren't we always? Have we got many booked in? Mm, looking good. A couple of business parties. Well, do you want to check the play settings first, then? Please, the others will be in soon. OK. Uh, just before you go, girls, I'd like to show you these. These are the new uniforms waiters and staff will be wearing from today. Oh, no. When's the rest of it coming? Well, think of it as, like, a uh, new Valcousine. There isn't much of it, but what there is looks really good. Here you go. One coffee. Thanks. Good boss to work for, then, is he, Mr Johnson? Oh, yeah, yeah. Very good, yeah. Do you mind if I take your name, just for the record? Uh, Greg Salter. Well, actually, you'll find me on your record somewhere. I've just done 12 months inside. I only got out a few weeks back. Oh, right. Naughty boy, eh? What were that for? Oh, uh, petty stuff, you know, thieving and that. It's all on my record, you know, shoplifting. Not armed robbery, though. I mean, uh, that's out of my league, that kind of stuff. Thanks for telling me. Well, you know, I don't normally go around shouting about it, you know, but you'd find out sooner or later, so I thought I'd uh, save you the time. Thank you. Did Mr Johnson know you'd been to prison before he took you on? Uh, yeah, well, I think that's one of the reasons he took me on, you know, because I think he felt sorry for me, like, you know. He's been brill, you know. I mean, who else would take a chance on me, eh? Hiya. Can we have a couple of cans, please, Dad? Spent your money already? Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, this is Detective Sergeant Sheridan from Manor Park Police Station. Oh, right. <laughs> this is my lad, Gary, and uh, his mate. We've been into town shopping. We've got a wedding present for Mick. Yeah, we, uh, club together. I'll, um, go and show my mum, then. See ya. Yeah, see ya. Hey, listen, uh, why don't you go and play on the machine, you know, while I'm talking so right. I don't suppose you've heard anything about this Lytratech job over the grapevine, have you? Oh, don't move in those kind of circles. Too big a job, you know. And I'm dead lucky having this job, you know. I'll only keep in this one if I keep my nose clear and stay clear of trouble, you know. Oh, well. Oh, cheers. You couldn't do us a favour, could you? Just let us know where you were between half past four and five o'clock yesterday. You know, I don't know. Uh, Gary, uh, yesterday before tea time, I was with you, wasn't I? Uh, yeah, you had the afternoon off. Did you go anywhere special? Oh, no, nowhere special, no. Just uh, keeping him off the streets, you know. What were we doing? Um, what's the vid, didn't we? And then you went into work. Right, thanks. I might need to speak to you again and see how it goes, eh? Yeah, sure, OK. Yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. He's only just gone, has he? Yeah, he wanted to take away coffee. I hope you charged him. Did he say anything to you about the robbery? Well, I told him I'd been inside, and that got him all excited. He even started questioning me. Cheek. Same here. I'm used to it, though, I suppose. One spell inside, and it haunts you for the rest of your life. Yeah, it doesn't help being six foot two and black, though, does it? Got you marked down as a thug from the start. True enough. Hey, are you going down to pick the in-laws up or what? No, yeah, my hands come with me. OK, I'm ready. Hey, you don't want to do us a favour and do a delivery for us. You know, number nine, Brookside Close. It's for an Eddie Banks. You know the fella that got smashed up in the robbery? I thought you wanted to have a word with him, see how he was. Yeah, I suppose we could. Only take a minute. Hey, listen, uh, don't forget about tonight. We'll have a drink with Simbad and anyone else who wants to come to this stank, do you? Yeah, Mick, all right, yeah. I'll see you later, Mick. See you later, Marianne. Did they say the right thing to the busy dad? Spot on, son. Spot on. We could get done for indecent exposure in these things. I don't know what you're complaining about. You're going to earn twice the tips you'd normally get. Watch out for the creep with the beard on table two. How has he done? He keeps putting his arm around my waist and squeezing me. The lech. Hey, stop talking about the customers like that. Just smile and back off gracefully next time. No, if he does it again, you give him a slap. You give him a slap and you'll be getting your P45. I'll keep an eye on him. Oh, please, can we go back to the old uniforms? These are impossible to bend down. There's plenty of other girls out there unemployed be glad of a job. That's blackmail. That's life.
You can't threaten to sack people just because they don't like the clothes you want them to wear. It's good for the image of the police. No, it isn't. They'll get used to it. Listen, uh, is there any chance of you looking after the police for a couple of hours? I've arranged with Sinbad to go and see Terry, see how he's getting on. Again? Don't you think you're spending a bit too much time in Terry? He needs his mate standing by him, and I'm his best mate. Now, do you want me to get Max in for you? No, he's working from home today. He's giving Patricia a bit of a break. Excuse me, miss. What's that plate doing here? Barry! How are you, my friend? I'm in a rush. This is a bit out of your league here, isn't it? We don't do discounts. Yeah, well, I just thought I'd come and support a new venture. Yeah, we'll make sure you leave a good tip, eh? We'll do, my friend. We'll do. You ready to order, sir? Oh, two of you will do for me. I can recommend the lamb. OK, I'll have some of that, then, on your recommendation. Would you like to see the wine list, sir? <laughs> well, well, well. What a pleasant surprise. Oh, I love the outfit, sweetheart. Family all well, I hope? Fine, thank you. Mm. I've become quite fond of your mum, you know. She's a real favourite of mine. Are you ready to order, sir? Of course, some of these prices are a bit stiff, aren't they? I'll have a half a carafe of the house white. I'm sure you'll find it quite satisfactory. Don't be long now, will you? <laughs> I need a group special. All oh, right, which table? Table three. What do you want to do, bump or spill? I'll bump, you spill. So you're OK, then? A bit sore, you know, a bit shook up and all. He's worse than nosy for fussing. Mm. Hey, nothing's too good for the Avago hero. Yeah, there's not many people who do that these days. Thanks for delivering. I didn't want to leave him on his own. Uh, I'm not totally incapacitated, you know. Yeah, he was dead lucky by the sound of it. Look, he isn't dead, you mean. At least if I was dead, I wouldn't have to put up with you and your mother fussing me to bits. Hey, I'd make the most of it while he got the chance, mate. I'm gonna have to go, Mick. Yeah, we better go. Hey, listen, uh, you never believed that sergeant who came out to see us. Yeah, he was questioning Mick and I like we were suspects or something. Oh, hey, why'd they think that? Well, you and the other witnesses, you say the raid was black, don't you? Yeah, so? Well, I'm the first black face he sees who happens to live with somebody who's just left Lighter Tech. Ah, oh, I'll just be routine. No one's gonna believe you could do something like that, are they? Yeah, well, you tell that to Sergeant Sheridan. I haven't even got an alibi, mate. See you later, Ed. See you. See you, Carl. See you. Bye. Oh! Ah! Oh, I'm ever so sorry, sir. Well, watch out, will you? These are expensive trousers. I'm really sorry, sir. I'll just get you a cloth, sir. I'm sorry. And I'm not wearing these stupid uniforms again. Nor me. So, back to the old uniforms tomorrow, then. Well, I will if you will. Done. If Mr Grant wants his customer seeing these, he can wear them himself. <laughs> the Ali doesn't look too bad, does he? At least he's not stuck in an Aussie bed all day, is he? Look at him, Sin. Said he used to be a good footballer. He used to be one of the lads. You shouldn't be doing stuff like this. Yeah, well, leave it to the doctors, eh, Barry? They're having basket weaving next. I can't leave him here, can I? Well, at least you know he's being looked after here. He needs help. He shouldn't be doing this stuff. Well, maybe it's just a part of it. I mean, he's bound to be getting what he needs. Look at the state of him. I'm not having him spending the rest of his life in places like this. Yeah, well, it might be the only thing for him. Not while I'm still breathing. You don't give up on someone who's like your brother, do you? Come on, Sally. I can't do it. It keeps falling apart. Sally, you can't just drag him out. Well, why not? He hasn't been sectioned. All he needs is looking after. Come on, Sally. You're coming with us. We're going to get you back in the real world.
Come on, Mick, wake up. Big day's finally here. Coffee rum. Oh, cheers, Craig. Whose idea was it to open that second bottle of scotch last night? Yours. <laughs> Tell me, do I look as bad as I feel? <laughs> yeah, what do you think? Oh, yes. Very Picasso. Hey, how about all that stuff he was telling us all last night about the police having him down as an armed robber? I couldn't believe it. Oh, it's just routine. It'll mean nothing. Hey, time's getting on. We'll have to wake him up soon. Oh, seems a shame to move him. Spoil me creation. I mean, look at that. Hasn't got a care in the world, has he? Give him a week. He's getting itched, isn't he? Where's your romance from? He's not trapped yet, you know. He could get a last-minute reprieve. The bride might not show. <laughs> You couldn't have picked a worse day. We just need to give the flat the once over. We'll try not to cause you too much inconvenience. You've caused enough already. I've left my mum at the hotel in tears. I'm not even supposed to see Mick until the service. It is supposed to be bad luck, you know. If we could have waited, we would have waited, Miss Dwyer. The fact is, we're investigating... I know. An armed robbery. A very serious crime, which we've got nothing to do with. I am sorry. It was a hard decision, but, well, we just thought it would help to eliminate you and Mr Johnson from our inquiries. Come on, wakey, wakey, Mr. Johnson. Even the condemned man's allowed one last breakfast. How's the head? Oh, that's more than a week. <laughs> what day is it? It's your wedding day, soft ollies. Hey, I'm just putting the finishing touches to my speech. Uh, do you think I should mention your first wife or what? <laughs> Stay clear, mate. Unless you want to start World War III. <laughs> hey, what's happening here, boys? Hey, uh, Marianne's bound to want me to mention Ellis, isn't she? Maybe just stick to reading cards out here, you know, play it safe. What, you don't want him to mention your mucky mistress in Morecambe, then? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more. What's her phone number? Listen, boys, am I going to get untied here, or what? Well, that's how that buxom blonde left you last night, Michael. <laughs> What's going on? Happy wedding day. Someone get him a towel. What's happening? Mr Johnson, we have a warrant to search your premises. Come on, then. Let's get you a bit of a wash, eh? Feel a lot better after that, sir. So. Good lad. Are you going to stay out all night on a regular basis, or was this just a one-off? I was with Terry. He needed me. Why isn't he in hospital? Because I got him out. Now he do us a favour. Give his hand to make the spare room up. You're not expecting him to stay here. I really don't want us sharing our home with... With a loony. I wasn't going to say that. Look, he just needs people round him who he knows. He needs loads of what my mum used to give out. You know, a bit of love, a bit of affection. We could have talked about it. It'll only be for a couple of days, just till mm. I get something sorted out. Looks like I've got no choice in the matter. But I don't want to be left alone with him, OK? And I'm not a trained psychiatric nurse. He's been through some bad stuff in his life. He might need his hand holding sometimes, that's all. Like I did for you once. Now will you help us make the bed before my halo slips? Lead on, St Barry. Don't worry, kids. They'll be gone soon. Mick, um, I'll just nip downstairs, check the car and that. Yeah, look, uh, if you need anything, just give us a shout out and I'll be down in the shop. Thanks, Mick. Dad, what are they looking for? They're just looking, son. Don't worry, we've got nothing to be ashamed of. Greg, listen, can you take these down the swings or something? Just get them out of here. Oh, of course I can, yeah. Come on, you two, get me some clothes on, yeah? Hey, listen, uh, if you can take this for company, it's been frisked. They sat in our house a couple of times when I was a kid. They never forget it, you know. I haven't. What's the idea, then? What do you think you'll find? As you know, we're investigating a crime of violence, which involves the use of a firearm, Mr Johnson. It's important that we follow up every possible option. And I'm an option. Well, yes, you are. Miss Dwyer, yourself, even Mr Salter, as he works here. We are supposed to be getting married today, you know. Don't let him get to you. He's already got to me. He dragged me out of my hotel room in front of my mum and dad and all my family like I'm some kind of mass murderer. It's as much a formality as anything. Not to me, it isn't. Could you tell me who tilled up for you in the shop last night? I did. And do you keep the cash on the premises or did you put them into the night safe? Keep it here. I'd like to take a look at your cash, please, and your till roll if you've got it. No problem. I've got nothing to hide. Thanks, love. Oh, that smells gorgeous, that. You look like you've got your work cut out. 
Well, normally have Jean Crosby helping me, but she couldn't today. She's got a lot on. She's like a teenager mm -hmm. sometimes. She's marvellous for her age, though, isn't she? Hey, I bet weddings always mean long days for you, though, don't they? I've been at it since six o'clock. Oh, fresh flowers make the day special, though, don't they? We had some lovely arrangements for our calls. Not that they helped the marriage much. Takes more than a few flowers, doesn't it? Mm. Is there no chance of your son trying again with his wife? I'm afraid not. They just got married far too young, you know, when Sarah fell for the baby. Now we've got all this access to the child business. Just wish it was all over and done with. Right. See you at the wedding later then, love. We'll get this lot finished. <laughs> Ta-da. See ya. Hello. Can I help you? Yeah, I was hoping you might be able to do me a bit of a bouquet. Oh, for today? Well, for now, really. Take away. I haven't got time to do a bouquet. I don't mind paying a few bob over the odds, seeing as it's a last-minute rush job. Well, maybe I could do you a quick bunch. That wouldn't take too long. Yeah, that sounds like it'd fit the bill. Thanks. Thanks a lot. The ten will be all right. She's worth every penny. Do you want a message or a name on the card? No, thanks. I'll let the flowers say it for me. Are these from your work with Life Attack? That's right. Normal run-of-the-mill stuff? Sort of. Well, more or less, I suppose. There's a surprising amount of paperwork marked confidentially. Would you normally keep this amount at home? It would vary, really. Did Life to Tech approve of you keeping these once you'd stopped working for them? They're probably not even aware I've got them. Would it be any problem me having a proper look at this? Well, that's going to take time, isn't it? We're going to miss our own wedding at this rate. I could take them away with me if you didn't mind signing for them. Well, uh, your minions have searched me freezer, and guess what? I still haven't found the shotgun. Surprise, surprise. If you could just sign for these papers, we'll be out of your way as soon as we can. And uh, if you could sign for this, please, Mr. Johnson. Is that all my till money? There's just one or two notes we'd like to run a check on. I can't believe they'd really suspect Mick. I mean, it's as straight as they come, isn't he? Absolutely, but the Bobbies look like they mean business. Mm. You know what? This is all because that witness said that the raider was a black fella. Mind you, you can see how someone can make a mistake, though, can't you? How's your mean, though? Well, you know, they all look the same, don't they? I don't, but what are you like? Mick's going through torments up there, you know. Yeah, I know, I know he is, but I'm just saying, like... Oh, I tell you. Uh, you're not going out to Mandy's, are you? She's not my only client round here, you know. Victim, you mean, don't you? Be careful, friend. Slander. What's all that about? Some leech preying on the misfortunes of others. Hey, Sinbad. I think Mick could do with his best man up in the flat, you know, for a bit. Because the bobbies are on the way down. Could do with his spirits keeping up, you know. Yeah, now, shoot up there now. Thanks, Greg. What do you think of the wedding present, then? Oh, Mick and Marianne will be made up. I can't believe you got out of the shop without nobody stopping you. It's because we're getting good, aren't we? Apart from Lee. You just have to look confident. Come on, let's get it wrapped up before I have to go back to school. Did you get the wrapping paper? Finished it from Didi's shop. Oh, what have you got there? Toaster for Mick's wedding present. A toaster? Everyone gets toasters. And how did you two get the money to afford that? Um, me dad gave me the money. Oh, someone will give me some. Oh, I'll see you later. Mum, I'm off to work. I'll see you later. I'll see you later, love. How much are you putting in today? Ten quid. She noticed you? She didn't say anything. There's quite a bit in here today. It must be really empty. Oh, it should be made up. Have you got any salad tape? I don't think so. I'll just go to Ron's and rob some then. See you later. See you. Hiya. Come in. Oh, thanks, love. Do you want to see my mum? Uh, yeah, if she's in. Yeah, just come through. She's in the bathroom. Mom, visitor! Be down in a minute. She won't be long. I uh, brought her some flowers. They were just in the shop. I couldn't resist them. Oh, they're nice, aren't they? I'll put them in water if you like. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. My dad used to bring my mum flowers. Well, when I was little, he did. He used to bring me a few of the little ones as well. I feel like free she's from my room. It's nice. I bet you miss your dad, don't you? Oh, hello. Hello, man. Your charming daughter was just filling me in on some family history. I need you back at school. Mr Maguire's brought us some flowers. Nice, aren't they? Oh, lovely. School, please. Well, Gary's supposed to be coming back so we can wrap Mick's present. Well, I'll make sure it gets done. OK. 
Bye. Bye. You look very nice, Mandy. Very nice indeed. Going somewhere special? To a friend's wedding. I'll get you money. Comes round quickly, doesn't it? Well, I'm close and sweet, but not quite there. I'm oh, sorry, it's, it's, it's all here. I must have miscounted earlier. You know, you really suit that colour dress. I'd really prefer it if you didn't spend time alone with Rachel. <laughs> sorry. Well, there's no reason for you to stay now, is there? You've had your money. You look very nice dressed up. You should do it more often. I don't have much occasion to get out. Well, uh, have you thought about my offer? I mean, you should feel flattered, Mandy. When somebody takes an interest in you. Look, if you'll excuse me, I have to finish getting ready. Oh, sure. Well, enjoy the flowers. Hey, Sid, will you go over the park and get Greg and the kids, eh? Yeah, I'm on my way. Mm -hmm. You get yourself a taxi and go to the hotel and see your mum and dad. What am I going to tell them, mate? Oh, you'd misunderstand it. I'll sort the kids out and meet you at the registry office. Give us a hug. Oh. Let's just go and get married, eh? I wish I'd never kept those papers Eddie gave me. I tried to think what the police are going to make of them. What about this money in the till business? It's like they've got nothing better to do. Anyway, it's too late to worry about it now. Let's just enjoy our big day, eh? Yeah. The documents are full of details about when and where the wages were going to be paid out and picked up. Yeah. And then there's a lot of new notes and a boyfriend's till. I'm going to check on the serial numbers. Would you see if they match with anything from the robbery? Both a moment, please. Um, <clears throat> isn't there something missing today, girls? Not sure what you mean. Uh, the new staff uniform springs to mind. All mm, right. Thoughtfully provided by Barry. Well, mine's in the wash. So's mine. Oh, I see. Okay, then carry on. I had a feeling there might be. That's a star, isn't he? He's really keeping the kids' minds up all the police business. Yeah, well, that's what the best man's for, isn't it, eh? Making sure things go the right way. My lords, ladies and jelly spoons, I present to you Prince Leo and Princess Tiamelina of Dreadland. Mick, go off the feet. Hey, Leo, you still got your trainees on? Cool, late, eh, Dad? Well, it's for the quick getaway, you know, for when the cops arrive. Mick, I couldn't get him out of them. Ah, who cares? Cost more than the shoes, anyway. <laughs> Where did you and Rachel get the money to buy me a toaster? Oh, uh, I've been saving up for ages. It's only signed from the both of us. Which me will pay for it, really. Oh, things are starting to warm up now, eh? Are you the redhead? Oh, that's Eddie Banks, missus. You know the fellow that got done in the robbery? Hiya, love. Hiya. Yeah. Hey, Rosie, this is Greg Salter. He works in the pizza parlour. Rosie Banks. Hiya. Yeah. Nice to meet you. <sighs> nice to meet you, too. How's your fellow, like? You know, he's the one that got beat up in the robbery, isn't he? Yeah, that's it. Well, he's not too bad, thanks. Although that's more than I could say for them robbers if Eddie ever got his hands on him. Uh, I'll just go and see if uh, Mike wants a hand. Hey. Hey. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Big day, then. Yeah. <laughs> Hope the rain stays off. Yeah. Uh, uh, Eddie's sorry he's not here. Oh, well, listen, those injuries. Well, it all really shook him up, but he's gone back into work today, you know, now the strike's finished. Oh, well, at least he's up and about, eh? Yeah. Anyway, you'd probably enjoy yourself better without him. Hey, yeah, I'll try. <laughs> uh, you the jewel, eh, sir, if that's all right? Yeah, of course. Mm. I'll keep my sausage roll. <laughs> Listen, um, I suppose I should say I'm sorry, you know, for having to go with you the other night. Ah, no problems, love. Honest. It's just one of those times when it's all getting a bit much, you know? Oh, tell me about it. My life's full of them. Hey, you look very smart. <laughs> uh, 
I feel like a Christmas turkey, you know, all dressed up dead tight. And I, don't panic, missus, the giblets are in a little plastic bag. <laughs> so you want an assistant? Well, you can carry some of my gear if you like. I want to go inside and check the light out first. Just this, is it? Yeah, and then we can shoot from over there and get a wide shot of Marianne arriving. Well, you better get a move on. She's due any minute. Well, they're always late brides, aren't they? Come on. Hey, uh, Dee. So Marianne's not arrived yet, eh? Uh, no, not yet. Always brand new. No sign of Marianne yet? Oh, don't start that. I'm nervous enough as it is. Well, stop worrying, will you? I mean, it's my job to worry, OK? You've remembered the rings, haven't you? The rings? Well, what'd you take me for? It's all under control. Nothing can or will go wrong. Ah, no, sir. I'm just a bit hit of throwing a like crap this morning, you know? Well, forget about it. But if Marianne doesn't turn up, I'll marry her myself. How's that, OK? You've <laughs> kept a very low profile lately. Oh, can you blame me? Actually, I was hoping that we'd have a chance to talk. Why is it? Whenever you start a conversation like that, I get a sick feeling in my stomach. There's things to be sorted out still, and there never will be a good time. Me and Bev, we want to make... Well, we want to make proper plans, be more settled. I'm not going to divorce you, Ron. But why not? We tried it again, and it still didn't work out. There's no point. I want to marry Bev so I can adopt little Josh legally, so I can be a proper father for him. You know my religion won't let me divorce you. Dee, I need to be free of our marriage. It shouldn't have anything to do with anybody else. It's got a lot to do with God. It was God that joined us together in the first place, and whatever you got yourself into with Bev was a sin. It seems only right that you could carry on living in sin. And you'd be happy staying married to a sinner then, would you? Nobody said I was happy. So I have to wait five years then, do I? Thanks. You all right, Mum? Fine, thanks, fine. So where do you want this stuff now? Uh, just over there, mate. I'll be with you in a minute, OK? You sure you're OK? Your dad's sense of timing is immaculate. Here of all places, he wants a divorce. Oh, what's he like? We'll do it then. Get rid of him. I can't, can I? I can't go against my religion. He wants a divorce so he can marry Bev. Then he thinks he'll be able to adopt Josh. Uh, listen, I've got to go and get my camera gear set up. Look, I know you want to run away from all this, and I can understand that, love. But that child is yours, your flesh and blood. Well, I'm not going to be ready yet. Will you think about it, Michael, please? When Josh is a teenager, your dad'll be an old man. I know you don't want him now, but think about yourself later. You might want him then. Yeah, well, I'll still be able to see him, won't I? Well, you might be able to if he's adopted. They might bar your access to him. Unless you stand up for your rights now, as the real father. Yeah, well, we'll see how it goes, eh? Got to get set up. Yeah, I'll be glad. Put, put it in the water now. Right, then you give it a nice soak, give it a scrub, and then give it a clean. All right, sir? Now, look, you've got to give it a soak first, and then a scrub. Any problems, give us a shout. All right, Terry? Good lad. You sure this is a good idea? Well, I hope it is. I just thought if you did the normal everyday things, you know, kept busy, then it might help. Are you sure he's well enough? I will get him better. I'm not sure it's a good idea. I just don't like him being here. Hey, girls, we've got a new washer up. General kitchen duties as well, all right? Hey, listen, where's your new uniforms? Uh, I think they're in the wash. After one day? We're refusing to wear them, actually. They're demeaning and we get too much hassle from the customers because of them. Are you in on this? I'm management. You were warned, girls. Oh, hey, look, you go and get them off. I'll clean it up. Listen, you were told. No uniform, no job. Remember? Hey, hang on. You can't sack us. Why not? Because we're withdrawing our labour, aren't we? Yeah, that's from now, officially. Right, I'll see you after. Leo, move in a bit. How's that? All right. Smile. Right, I'll just pop back inside, see if everything's ready, OK? All right, sir. It's only one thing, he's thorough. <laughs> How's your Eddie? Oh, he's on the mend, thanks. Well, I guess a bit awkward here without him. Well, single girls will have to stick together. <laughs> Read about Eddie in the newspapers. <laughs> have a go hero. Yeah. Must be very proud of him. Well, I am, but worries me to think what might have happened. I mean, all these guns nowadays, it's getting terrible. I don't know. Mick looks lovely, doesn't he? 
And Marianne's family up today, Mick? Yeah, they're coming over with her from the hotel. Well, I hope they are, otherwise I'll have a ton of sarnies going to waste. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, smile. What do you think I'm doing? Still not too late, you know. You can leg her before she gets here. Oh, I can't walk around. <laughs> Just say it like. Eh, uh, if everyone's fed up waiting, we can go inside when we're ready. Is there a bar in there? Oh. I hope you don't mind me asking, no. but you know what we were talking about this morning, about your lad's situation? Is he having a difficult time getting custody of his little girl? Well, it's, it's all in sort of limbo at the moment. I mean, Sarah's still at her parents with Rebecca, but I think our Carl's avoiding the situation. Right, now, tickets, please. Come along now. Take your seats for the matinee. Room for two more inside. And hey, don't flick a nice cream at you, sure, that's you. All right. Do you know that? Before my time, Sean. Come on. It's always the child that suffers the most, isn't it? Well, so they reckon. But I know our Carl misses his daughter something rotten. And what are his rights to seeing the little girl? Could he get sole custody if he wanted to? Well, he's not a big one for officialdom, but... Have you got a special interest? Oh, just sort of. Some in the family's had a baby and... Well, there's a bit of a dispute, that's all. But there's a lot of it about. You your buttonholes all over the place. Oh, well, I couldn't stop it flopping. Mind you, that's always been my problem. Did you get a visit from Slimy Maguire this morning? Yeah, I found him chatting in the kitchen with Rachel. Did he bring you some flowers? Well, he bought some, yeah, but I don't know why. Yeah, well, something must be making him think it's worthwhile. What's worthwhile? Making an effort with you. Ow! You got my skin, then. Sorry, it's an accident. Oh, well, be careful. I've got very sensitive skin, me, you know. Right, come on, let's get everyone inside. There's the bride. Not here. Not now. It's not the cops, is it, Grey? Michael Johnson, I am arresting you on suspicion of robbery and carrying a firearm with the intent to commit an indictable offence. You don't have to say anything, but anything you do say may be given in evidence. <laughs> Are you joking, man? You're seriously wrong here. Look, I know this isn't the best thing that can happen to anybody on a wedding day, but if you'd just like to go with this police oh, officer... I never think about touching me. What about me kids? You can't just take me and leave them there. Mick, I'll sort the kids out, OK? Look, what's going on? You can't seriously be arresting Mick. Miss Dwyer, we'd also like you to come down to the police station as well. well what for? To help with your inquiries? Just a few questions. Look, I'm sorry I had to be oh, this Just way. leave her alone. Just leave her alone, right? Mick. No. 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 If you'd both like to get into the car now, please. For video, Brookside The Women features classic clips from the first 12 years of Brookside, together with brand new material, and it's out now in most shops.